uh, at 775-4848, then we'll be able to uh, write the question down and then pass it on to you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay.
el Marus. Ah, uh, y bueno, lo andas tú lo has tenido vamos también el obtener el mora a dirúcula de la brutal general population el tigre ad el narva para ir a tú y me el borba el din dirga ngal ni tigre del gora dirga ngara listra ad el essential que el dirga ha pensado no ma aquí dirá que el melmo el melón ni tan caldo de ngara ad el blue ruasen mo taga ngal el mal dirón de walbu y de ser negro es lo rus el mo obtena a un rus el moral ad el rojo Era mal di lagi mungkin terkau mengajari del Johnson and Johnson amlay elerul darat pada mo certain mengurus de eh yang dena ungewal bui lembal men tidak kelarinya untuk pelilah ungewal bui lah mengsegi sel request terkau men mengarah table mesti pun ready ya dorus de elawa segi del vaksining. Then you know, just for information, I, I'm you know hanging around with uh, all kinds of people, and what they t uh, they're telling me is they rather uh, wait for Johnson and Johnson because it's less complicated. They can just uh, come by and take the shot, and that's it. So they're waiting. I, I have heard so many people say they're waiting for Johnson and Johnson. So can you explain more about that? Why say you know the story that they even be. Di di Moloru sendiri di sana ada lama kelas kerana ada lapu dua sei ngai gaya di Makasai kalau tak betul dua sei dia bil ke Tilo betul meng Makasai production ini malu betul sen lomeo beri yang di sana Makasai meng apriyo tiri dan tiri lagi di lombang dan tiri ke el ada beri yang lestira mera aigal klinik malu beri mera aigal pasiol dua sei ni mengkadang memprioritai setiap lagi dia korang lupa dia oh urul wasit aita ya segera erul dar semua orang dah ada terbela orang ada asyik dah registry dah hospital dah compound dah malu betul orang lagi lah outlying states lah yang ada asal orang matobe wise malu malu wise tinggal orang ramai orang lah tinggal orang southwest tapi tinggal orang perluan lah kafar orang ya orang tu dia kita dia tak orang list wise okay wise eh, aku muda sengora, adik lagi dia hora update lagi, eh, dan aku pasti rasa anda tinggal lupa kembali hora buku CC, hora Q&A. So I want to turn the floor over to Dr. Yano so he can have a discussion with the gentleman. Yes, we look forward to lagi tinggal muda soal other bela di So who who is going to be the first speaker, uh, uh, Doctor? Nick Sangom Mahmoud Sangom. Oh, Commander Nick. Yeah. Okay. Philip Nick. Philip Nick. Yeah. Sangom. Cheers. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Philip Nick with the HHS uh, Trauma and Critical Care Team, and uh, we complete our tenth operational day here, and. I must say that we, our mission here is to augment the Ministry of Health staff in delivering the vaccine, and that integration has been completely seamless. Um, really hats off to the MIH staff. Um, they have an extremely efficient uh, uh, setup for the vaccination program here, um, among one of the best that I've actually seen uh, in comparison to the vaccination centers in the United States. So really hats off to them uh, for their program here. Uh, I think we completed uh, over 4,000 vaccinations to date, I believe. Um, I have a staff of, uh, of 10, including medical providers and nurses, paramedics, and we brought along a uh, pharmacist as well. You know, these folks have uh, been on the other side of COVID uh, for the past year, especially last year, responding to um, critical care missions. Uh, so we bring that expertise uh, here as well. Uh, we've taken care of some of the most uh, critical patients suffering from COVID-19. 
And actually, we have some planned uh, lectures with uh, the nursing staff and medical staff uh, tomorrow at the hospital here to share some of those experiences and our best practices uh, for managing uh, COVID-19. Uh, we hope that uh, with a successful vaccination program that, uh, uh, that, won't, that you won't have to experience um, that here, any of the severe cases here. So, um, Commander, maybe you can share what do you do in your day job when you're not a member of the NDMS team? Sure. Uh, so I'm a full-time um, emergency medicine physician assistant. Uh, so we very similar uh, to, uh, well, we pre pretty much do the same things uh, with the physicians. We work alongside physicians and I practice emergency medicine in Miami, Florida. Uh, so in my own institution, uh, we've been dealing with this uh, uh, since uh, March uh, of 2020. And uh, I can say that since the vaccination program has uh, increased in my local area, uh, before I came here, we actually saw actually a decrease um, in COVID cases, especially among the 65 uh, age and older population. Uh, that's because in the U.S. Uh, they vaccinated health care workers first and uh, those 65 and older and those with uh, well, comorbidity uh, conditions such as diabetes and heart disease. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Diaz. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, Richard Brostrom. Uh, a physician who's been uh, uh, working in the region for over uh, 25 years now, and I'm uh, currently with uh, CDC and have been the Operation Warp Speed coordinator for all of the Western United States initially, and then uh, uh, now we're getting additional help, and so I'm focusing on uh, Hawaii and the Pacific Islands. So we've been working in the background trying to make sure that Palau gets its fair share of, uh, of vaccine supply. We were able to look at the plan that Palau submitted, which was excellent, you know, way back in October and November, and have been uh, really amazed to see how the plan has unfolded here in Palau, how the uh, prioritization and the determination of the people in Palau to get this vaccine out were sort of in un unprecedented uh, time with uh, such a great public health challenge. And as always, Palau rises to the challenge, even though everyone's tired and it's, it's been going on for a long time, we see the determination and the faces of the Ministry of Health staff that we're working with. It's been a real pleasure. Um, it's been difficult to be far away in Honolulu on calls with Kafar and Ritter uh, a couple of times every week, getting the reports and trying to help where we can. Uh, and it's uh, just amazing to be able to come here uh, and to work alongside of the staff and see the amazing changes that have happened uh, here in Palau. So I yeah, have to yeah. take it, any uh, questions, but I can say that, that you know, there's a reason why Palau has the number one performing vaccine program in the United States right now, leading all the states, leading all the islands uh, right now is Palau. And the reason is because uh, people like the uh, Ministry of Health, all of government that's supporting them, Ritter and Gafar, uh, just uh, uh, really professional and determined to get this job done for the community. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Dr. Brustrom. Uh, uh, let me say a few words uh, on our behalf of our people uh, from Palau. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people didn't understand why we have people here that can do the job and you guys came over. Now, I see it differently. You guys are much appreciated because you came here and relieve our staff. I mean, they've been on 24 hours a day, every day, you know, and they need somebody to come in and, and relieve them. And we really thank you for you and your team to come in and relieve our medical staff, you know, so they can take a break and, and see uh, their family. Uh, because when this whole thing started a while back, you know, we, we have been working so hard uh, like the, when we first start this radio uh, conference call, which we are <clears throat> we are doing right now, 
Uh, we started Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then we, you know, scaled down to Tuesday, Thursday, and now we only do it on Wednesday, which uh, we update the public so everybody knows what's going on. So we thank you very much for coming on board. Okay, back to you, Kafar. So, uh, Dr. Brostrom, uh, Tuling and, and to all the listeners, uh, I think um, uh, the public had a chance to uh, to hear um, Dr. Brostrom yesterday uh, when we went to uh, OEK. I, I think they've been able to play that uh, joint meeting that we were able to join with them uh, yesterday afternoon. And, of course, uh, this morning we were um, uh, with the president and uh, the vice president along with uh, the U.S. Ambassador at the press conference this morning. So I see. Uh, that, that will also be uh, uh, televised. It was televised and, and is available. But uh, perhaps, Dr. Brustrom, um, uh, we can uh, look at um, uh, some questions regarding our readiness in terms of the hospital. I know that you haven't, uh, and uh, Team Commander Nix here, haven't uh, had the chance to sit down with the, the clinicians, the doctors, and the nurses nurses here, but just by your uh, current observations, what, what are your insights into how uh, prepared we are in terms of that first case and and, and whether or not uh, we should expect that case to be an asymptomatic case or perhaps it's some, a person who will uh, probably need a critical Any care. questions on there? No. Thanks, Your Far. And, you know, as, as always, Palau uh, is, is ready and, uh, we, and we believe that uh, Palau is ready. I think no one was ready a year ago, not even in the United States. Um, and of course, that's when Palau uh, locked their borders down, uh, which we thought was a you know very uh, extreme move. But as time went on, we realized the wisdom of that move, not only to give Palauans a chance to organize and prepare to see what was happening to other locations and for, while they protect themselves, but also it allowed the federal government to take the steps to try to help as well. So we weren't quite ready to help either. Uh, and so it's allowed us to uh, help with lab testing and so that you can recognize uh, COVID if you ever had a case. Uh, and behind me in the EOC is a list of all the lab supplies and all the testing equipment. Much of that wasn't here a year ago, but it's here now and there's great expertise in the lab to diagnose uh, the cases. There is a PPE to keep the medical uh, staff uh, safe in abundance here in Palau. Um, additional ventilators were brought in. Uh, there was work done in the ICU and, and to, uh, to, to create a safe space so that patients can get care, but the medical staff can still stay safe because, of course, the hospital will have to stay open for lots of other uh, uh, cases that will be going on. So. Um, in addition to that, uh, the hospital uh, preparedness for the facility, it was also important to try to uh, help the medical staff be ready. So last summer we did a course, a 16-lecture course, and Palau participated in this, uh, and it was recorded, and so folks can go back and listen to those lectures. But really, with this, um, we really wanted to come here and, and do some sharing of information with the medical teams and nursing teams in person. And for that, we right now have a, a rare opportunity, and I'd like to ask uh, uh, a com Team Commander Nix to talk about uh, what's going to happen tomorrow for the nursing team and the medical team. Sure. Uh, we have uh, one of our nurses who's been on several deployments uh, and critical deployments, not only for the uh, HHS teams, but also on her local institution at, in Seattle. Uh, so she uh, has got a, a really great uh, lecture lined up uh, for the nurses that's going to delve, delve into the therapeutics and you know, really lessons learned and, and how to care for these patients. Uh, we have another subject medical expert, uh, Dr. Cecily Wang, uh, who is a critical care physician also has been on several of these uh, critical care mission deployments uh, uh, over the past year and works in Hawaii as a critical care physician and uh, has lots of experience that uh, makes sure the sickest uh, COVID patients. So she will be uh, uh, talking again about 
uh, lessons learned on how things started out uh, almost a year ago and kind of where we are now as far as therapeutics uh, and, and ventilator management. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a big exchange of information. And uh, again, you guys are kind of uh, ahead of the game because uh, you'll be very, very well prepared uh, for anything that's to come your way. Thanks, uh, Team Commander Nix. I just I, wa I wanted to continue though with um, some reassurance that just because we're training the medical staff here uh, doesn't mean that anyone expects to have a case. I think the goal here is to keep is to stay COVID free, and on top of that, begin to build the system that's COVID safe in the community. And uh, and so uh, you know, there's still very strict uh, quarantine. Uh, isolation pre-travel policies that exist here that exceed CDC standards um, and uh, it's unlikely that a case uh, will occur any time in the near future even with uh, some of the reasonable relaxations that have been proposed and negotiated uh, here uh, with the Ministry of Health uh, and however all of that is also depends on the community here both in terms of getting their vaccine and continue to be uh, aware of changes for COVID, uh, to avoid panic and rumors that can occur in the community or on Facebook, to continue to look towards Ministry of Health for the guidance because uh, they really are doing a great job. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Brushstrom and, and Team Commander Nix. Um, can, we, can we perhaps talk about uh, I know Mr. Diaz mentioned the vaccine, so perhaps talk about the, the vaccines a little bit. Um, I know that we've talked about the Moderna a lot. Uh, Dr. Yano has been here a couple of times, Claret, and then I think the community is well aware of uh, what the Moderna vaccine is, but perhaps with the Johnson & Johnson, uh, before we do a rollout, uh, perhaps just a short sort of uh, overview of what that vaccine is like and, and a potential difference with the Moderna and how uh, we plan to use it if that's uh, an effective uh, plan. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Diaz, I agree. I think that uh, all of our typical um, um, public health programs across the country probably underestimate the popularity that will come with this uh, uh, new uh, J3, let's just call it the J3 vaccine, uh, because it has some uh, fantastic features. It's a, it is uh, less, the, the cold chain is less strict. Uh, refrigeration is fine. Uh, it lasts a long time. It, uh, and the nice thing is, of course, is it's just a single dose. Mm -hmm. and, to, and two weeks later, uh, you begin to have some real immunity. Four weeks, it's great. Um, but most folks are immunized after, after just two weeks after the dose. How, how about the uh, side effects, Nita, you know, like uh a sore arm or headache and um, vomiting. Sure. No, no side effect on Johnson and Johnson. Uh, so the side effect profile for uh, for the Johnson and Johnson is uh, slightly less than it is for the uh, Moderna. I think we have to look at the trials and the results of the of the trials. The fever is still uh, in some pain and uh, soreness is is pretty uh, common, but. It's uh, particularly for elderly people who are getting it. There seems to be a lot less side effects in general um, uh, with this with this single dose vaccine. Uh, but we try not to uh, focus too much on the side effects from Moderna uh, because it, it does make for kind of a, a rough day the second day after getting that shot. But it's worth it because the uh, we know that Moderna is really super strong against uh, against uh, COVID-19. Uh, for the Johnson uh, vaccine, it was tested at a different time, and it's tempting for people to look at the uh, vaccine uh, efficient, efficacy, we call it, mm -hmm. um, because it's a little bit less than Moderna. It's still great, and it's, uh, so it's, it's more closer to a little over 70%. Uh, but, but the Moderna was tested in other countries where there's a lot of viral variants, and, it, uh, and so it's not really a fair test. It, there has never been a side-by-side -side test. I can tell you that uh, you know the, the Moderna is a real Cadillac of the vaccine. That's a, the main workhorse. It's the main vaccine for the people of Palau, and it is certainly one of the best vaccines we've ever rolled out, which is why it's been popular in Palau. 
Uh, the Johnson Johnson is also a very good vaccine. Uh, and the target, uh, wisely, are the folks that aren't going to be able to come back for a second shot. So those are the folks maybe on the outlying islands, maybe the folks that are, are homebound. Uh, consideration for some of the islands who are who are giving it to patients before they go to the Philippines for medical referral because it's a single dose, they can get them vaccinated faster if they hadn't been vaccinated yet. So that's another use that's been considered before they go to Hawaii or Guam or, or Philippines or Taiwan, um, even though in Taiwan the, the rate of COVID is remarkably uh, low. Mm -hmm. So it's a, good, it's a good vaccine, it's easier to transport. The Moderna uh, actually has one of the issues with Moderna is it's, uh, you can't shake it. And so if it goes down a bumpy road or over the uh, choppy sea and it's, it's uh, not frozen, then uh, it can become inactive. So I the see. program here is being really careful with that and it's, it's, it's best used for a big pod just like they're doing, doing hundreds and hundreds a day uh, in that gym, in that amazing, uh, efficient uh, facility that, that they're using right now. I see. And uh, perhaps, Doctor B, you can maybe talk about the the intent of the, the vaccine. I know that a lot of people are fixated on the difference in the efficacy, but maybe talk about the, the purpose of the vaccine and what it's meant to prevent. All right, so when we look at that efficacy, um, what that means is it's the ability of the vaccine to keep you from even being infected, from ever having a positive test, right? right. And uh, in that regard, Moderna seems to be a little bit better. But again, it's hard to, to, to do a side-by-side -side test. When we look at the real purpose of the vaccine for the community, that is to keep people out of the hospital. That's to keep people off the ventilators. Uh, uh, both. The Moderna and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine are remarkably effective, uh, well over 95% effective uh, for uh, keeping people out of the hospital from, with severe disease and preventing death from COVID-19. Additionally, that the vaccine has another uh, important side effect, and that it keeps you from being infected. Uh, and that uh, not really a side effect. I'm sorry for saying that. I mean, it's a, it's a real a true effect that we sometimes forget about. It keeps you from being able to spread the disease. So those people that are vaccinated, are even if they got COVID, they wouldn't be able to share it with their family or, or at work. They most likely would have a case that they wouldn't even know that they were infected. It would be a, a, an asymptomatic case. Uh, and, and that way, uh, the COVID wouldn't cause an outbreak like it has in so many places in the United States when someone uh, gets COVID and they haven't had a vaccine and they're living in, with their family or they're at church. And, and so we just don't want any of those uh, events to occur. Again, the most important thing is, is of course, uh, the, the uh, travel policies to prevent any importation of COVID-19 into Palau and those uh, those are still very strong travel policies, exceeding any CDC standards. Um, but it also important then is to is to get the population uh, uh, strong and prepared for uh, and COVID safe, as Dr. Forte says, uh, so that uh, so that the whole community can be can continue to return to uh, to, to a, a more normal uh, conditions here in Palau. And then perhaps uh, one more question is, um, so a lot of uh, our listeners and, and uh, people in the community understand, we talked about uh, uh, the concept of herd immunity, uh, but I think uh, a lot of people are still worried about those who are under 18 and, and what happens to their kids uh, or those who are ineligible to receive either uh, Johnson & Johnson or the Moderna vaccine. So any, any um, insights in, uh, to uh, what could be expected in the future regarding uh, children uh, or at least the teenagers and, and the vaccines? Well, this is especially true for Moderna, who started to look, uh, right now, of course, you have to be 18 years old to get the Moderna. And that's unfortunate because uh, full protection will come when, uh, when, when we can vaccinate children too. And there's no indication that that vaccine is not safe for kids. We think it's very safe. We think it's safe for pregnant women. 
but we can't declare it safe and make it FDA approved until we do the studies. So those studies are ongoing now. And for the 12 to 18 year old group, Moderna has finished uh, uh, enrolling those folks and usually after a couple of months they'll be able to analyze the data, which so far uh, looks like it's going to be quite good. And we'll be able to vaccinate children, it's estimated, the real Dr. Fauci estimated <laughs> that it's going to be maybe in, uh, in August or so, okay? Uh, and that would be a nice step forward for all of the uh, 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 countries. But we also know that the, we still want to be able to vaccinate down to even younger if we can to prevent from COVID-19. And those studies were announced, I think, today, actually, at the, looking down, at maybe even down to age two. Uh, these have to be done a little more carefully because the doses often have to be adjusted. And it may be not until later in the fall that we would have the results from such a trial and be able to vaccinate. So we like to see numbers First of all, to protect the elderly folks with diabetes and other illnesses, and we want to get that number, drive it up to 90% if we can, which would be a remarkable achievement here. Already it looks like you're over 70% for those people, uh, and probably the leader in the Pacific in that regard. Um, and especially when you get those second doses out to those people, that's going to be a great achievement. But still, we'd, we'd like to drive that higher if we can. And then, uh, and then for the general population, at 80% or 70% is the number that many of the countries are choosing to try to achieve for 18 and overs. Already uh, here, I think your number is, uh, for the first dose is already 60, over 60%, uh, which again uh, likely leads the, the region and, uh, and shows you're well on your way to achieving uh, this what we call herd immunity. And that, that's not a great term, but what it means is that if you have a case, it will just remain a, a one case and it won't spread through the community. If enough people are vaccinated, then you know we, we still don't want to invite a case here. Your, your, your policies are really strong, but if uh, somehow the virus was able to get in, it wouldn't be able to spread and cause an outbreak. It wouldn't. It wouldn't make the healthcare workers sick. It wouldn't cause any of the disruptions uh, that we have seen in the mainland. Okay. Yeah. Dr. B, uh, one of the uh, challenges that I've heard from the community is that uh, some uh, folks who have received the flu vaccine, the regular flu vaccine, influenza vaccine, vaccination that we get every year, some of those folks get really sick. Uh, so much so that they associate any vaccination with that kind of response. And so my question and clarification to you is, what do you say or advise to those folks who have very bad adverse reactions to a flu vaccine, but they're not going to get this vaccine because of that reaction? Yeah. But we really understand that uh, uh, some some of our vaccines uh, uh, will cause uh, side effects for the flu vaccine. Some people are fine. Others will feel like they've got the flu for two or three days afterwards and they don't want to get that shot. Uh, for our Moderna uh, vaccine, the side effect is, uh, is definitely noticeable. Most people will have pain in their arm. They'll, have an achy, they'll be achy for a day. But that's usually it. Uh, some will be nauseated uh, or feel tired. Uh, but it, it, the nice thing is it lasts usually for a day or so. By the second day, uh, people will feel uh, just fine, back to normal. The difference might be also because the flu vaccine is an inactivated uh, real virus uh, that you're getting, so your body reacts quite strongly to it. This mRNA vaccine that we're seeing, that we're using with Moderna, it's not new. Uh, it's been this technology has been used for a while, but it's the first approved, widely distributed mRNA vaccine, and I know that makes people nervous, especially if they're reading about it on Facebook instead of uh, at, on the CDC website. But uh, th this this uh, technology is really remarkable, and it makes a very pure vaccine, not a whole virus that's inactivated, but just a tiny piece 
of the COVID-19 that's made in a factory. It's not even part of the real virus. It's, it's the RNA piece that's uh, manufactured uh, very carefully, and it's a tiny, just a tiny part of the spike protein that your body helps to produce and create the immune response. So it's not as messy as a flu, a flu uh, it's, uh, vaccine. It's really pure. It's just for that spike protein. But that pure uh, and remarkable effectiveness that we have also has a weakness to it too, and that is this virus is very clever. And it, it, as we target our vaccine to prevent side effects and to, uh, to be able to get it out quickly, as we target that little spike protein, the virus by accident can sometimes change the spike protein like it did in South Africa. And then the vaccine might not be quite as effective. So uh, we, are, we get a response of, about these virus variants. You may be reading about them, the one in South Africa, the one in England, uh, the one in California, the one in New York. Um, and uh, these variants we're keeping very close watch on. We get a report every week across the Pacific and they're sampling uh, all across the Pacific uh, for patients with COVID. To, to watch, just make sure that these variants are not creeping into the region, and they have not yet. Uh, Hawaii's had a couple though, so, uh, but not in significant numbers. But we have to watch them because of, uh, this is probably what might cause us to need to have a booster or an update of our vaccine in six months or in a year. Uh, and so that's just uh, part of fighting this amazing global pandemic uh, part of that battle is to uh, try to look ahead to make sure that uh, even if there's a second shot the fight might continue longer than we want it to certainly the step the best step right now is to get the virus that or the vaccine that's available uh, and to keep the policies that palau has that are have remained help them remain covid free keep the hospital strong keep public health strong keep the uh, uh, restrict uh, requirements for people coming in that are either from a very low, uh, con a low low incidence country like Taiwan or coming from Guam with the vaccine already and some requirements for testing. So uh, we think that that's going to keep the virus out. Um, meanwhile, I think Palau is getting really prepared to be uh, COVID safe. So Dr. B, um, I know uh, also a lot of people are saying that um, uh, there is there wasn't enough time to uh, effectively test uh, um, like the studies were rushed uh, you know to develop the vaccine and and maybe you can share uh, I mean if you have first-hand knowledge of the, the study uh, in the development of, of the vaccine uh, if you can share then uh, much appreciate it. thank you for that question uh, Ritter and these vaccines have been um, an amazing focus for uh, for six or eight months uh, for the work that we're doing. And having worked for Operation Warp Speed initially, um, um, we're, uh, we're the regional coordinators have been able to see some of uh, and been part of some of the discussions, not all of them, but uh, we're always very mindful of, of this risk to go too fast and to cut corners. Uh, and, I, and what we, we saw from this vaccine development, and maybe we just got lucky getting this really good vaccine so quickly, but I think it was done because we're better at making vaccines than we were 10 years ago. I think that folks have done great research to help us uh, pick better targets and get one out faster. But mostly what we saw is the, the prior administration, uh, in their wisdom, uh, uh, paid for vaccine, uh, even though they weren't sure it was going to be the best vaccine, but they allowed the pharmacy companies to move very fast. Usually this can take five or ten years because it, everything has to happen in a special order. Um, now they were able to do some things simultaneously, but they didn't cut corners. So while they had a very good candidate, usually they would uh, wait to produce that in a large amount. Instead, they were able to produce it while it was still being tested because the U.S. had guaranteed, even if it just doesn't work out, that's okay. Uh, we've got you covered. 
and that's when your tax dollars are at work there. Um, and so when the, it turned out this vaccine was working very well, reviewed on the same peer review, published data, CDC, FDA, very rigorous looking at the data to make sure they were, no corners were cut. When the, when the CDC said yes, that's usually when the, the vaccine companies begin production, and now we wait another whole year or a year and a half. Instead, the CDC and FDA said yes, and already there were 15 million doses waiting to begin to distribute to the people. So I think that really made things go faster. Uh, the other thing is that uh, when they do the research in the old days, uh, they would be done at very many centers, and paper, people would be keeping track on papers of all the studies and the results in each individual person, looking at side effects, and they would bundle these in a box, and they'd ship the box off to a graduate student, and they'd put them in a computer, and uh, or maybe they'd have to ship them around, and then a, a single computer would try to, it would take months and months. Now it's all instantaneous. Just like you have a dashboard in Palau that you can feed the, 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 uh, the progress for the vaccine being delivered every day in real time almost, the same thing happened with the, with the, now with vaccines and with side effects. I was in the trial. I have to put my side effects in every week, and it, it, it gets pushed uh, in instantly into the uh, international database, so they can look for any any surprises uh, with the. With so the you vaccine. volunteered to be uh, a subject. A guinea pig? Were you going to say? <laughs> I know that's what you were going to say. <laughs> so that was, that was for the Moderna vaccine. No, no, sir. That was for the Pfizer vaccine. Oh, Pfizer. Yeah. That's the one that it, they did not do the uh, test for Moderna in Hawaii, but they did the Pfizer. Mm. Yeah. That's good to know. So, thank you, uh, Mr. Diaz, uh, Dr. Via Lewaner Sigil, test the Pfizer vaccine. Ah, Le Guinea Pig. <laughs> I read the pre studies. I knew it was going to work and be pretty good. It, I wasn't too big of a risk. Yeah, thank you for being uh, willing to die for us. For <laughs> uh, Mr. Diaz, uh, yes, sir. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Nix a question. Okay. Uh, if we assume that uh, most of the folks in Palau will be uh, inoculated. Uh, so uh, we can expect that if people do get the illness or the infection, that they will not go to the hospital and they remain home. Okay? So the, they don't get really severe infection and they don't come to the hospital. What is it that you can do as a treatment for those folks who have mild or moderate illness that remain at home and do not come to the hospital? What can you do for those? Well, the treatment for at home is really supportive care. So just like you have any other vi mild viral illness, it's going to be, you know, Tylenol or acetaminophen for your fevers, uh, make sure you're hydrating, drinking lots of fluids, resting. Um, and usually mild cases are pretty self-limited. You know, they'll go away. You can have other effects such as, uh, you know, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Again, uh, you know, all that stuff can be can be treated at home. Okay, so that's good. Have you, have you heard of anyone who has been vaccinated, who got COVID infection, mild one or asymptomatic one, that continued on to become a, what they call the long caller? because we don't know what to do with them. Any thoughts about that? The, the cases that I've, that I've seen, um, usually, you know, after they got their vaccine, usually the first vaccine that they probably already had COVID and then they, then they progressed. Um, but most folks that I've seen that at least have had the two vaccines and it's been a couple of weeks after their second vaccine, that group of uh, patients have actually done, done very well and really have, have been kept out of the hospital. 
the, the real key is, you know, getting the, the full vaccination. If it's the Moderna, of course, it's a sequence of two, um, the Johnson & Johnson one. But you've got you to wait a couple weeks after getting that vaccination to, to really have better protection. So the message is get the vaccine. Get the vaccine. As soon as you can, and as many of you as, you, as possible, and if possible, all of Palau become immunized. Is that the message? Thank you, Dr. Yano. I think that's, you know, we, people get the vaccine for several reasons, but, um, you know, they, to protect their own health is certainly an important reason. And to keep your to keep yourself safe and to keep you out of the hospital and out of the ICU. And the vaccine is very good at that. But it's also important to take that vaccine to protect your family, especially if there are other folks that are in the family that might be older or that might have diabetes or other illnesses. And, and then third, and your workplace. And then finally, uh, uh, protect the whole community because the more uh, folks who are vaccinated, the stronger this vaccine works. Um, and then pretty soon it's a, it's a, it's a strong shield uh, protecting all of Palau. Uh, another, just like the travel policies, um, the the uh, the vaccine creates a shield over Palau to keep it COVID free and COVID safe. Okay. Um, yes. El kire la ngarnia announcement ra arwa kafar al mera rae de lal gimul pudi. El kire la umra el orus kame nse me kafar al I'm going to repeat the second, summarize the second announcement. Those passengers that are leaving on the 27th on a flight, United flight to Guam, you know, you come in at a certain time to get your shots. Um, I don't have the announcement in front of me, but I remember uh, reading that. Uh, is that true? Okay. Items that you're supposed to bring. Uh, it's a passport, and the hospital number is one of them. What's it? What's it? It costs the thirty dollars and fifty cents. What's it? Okay, and from eight eight thirty to eleven o'clock on Friday morning. What's okay. it? Okay. The bell pick up a result 30, a result 30 at 12, a, a between 24 to 48 hours. Mong, also, mong mo ready at a and you uh, uh, ER, legal, uh, or a uh, uh, medical uh, records uh, ER. Oh, yeah. So, I really may to make sure that the bell is 30, and me pick up a result 30. I mean, I'm going to talk about the bell, and I'm going to talk about the report, and I'm going to talk about why say? Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, quickly, Tirgel other fully immunized than I get go to Monga Russia. Tell us, we're talking about maybe four, four thousand now. Three thousand three hundred thirty-seven. Tirgel now we complete the search of Tirgel. Why say? Okay. The reason why I'm asking all these questions, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people see me on the street and they think that I'm working for you with you guys, for you guys, you know. So I, you know, I, I, I have to get all this info in order for me to, you know, tell them the uh, correct answer. Okay. Before we uh, uh, wrap up the, uh, the talk show, mm -hmm. just one more question to both of you. Okay. The concept of uh, um, COVID passport, is that something that can be expected to happen for international travelers or what can you tell us about that? Well, there's no doubt that being vaccinated first, which is basically what the COVID passport is all about, is getting vaccinated, really would protect you uh, a lot while you're, while you're traveling. Still need to wear a mask, keep a distance, wash hands. Um, but the passport would protect you from being someone that would bring COVID into other countries. Or, uh, uh, you know, God forbid you bring it back home, right? So uh, th that is not yet official uh, guidance because unfortunately, you know, Palau is doing so well with their vaccine rollout. Again, best in the country. Uh, but many countries haven't even started. Most countries haven't even started. They haven't seen their first drop of vaccine in several of our island neighbors yet. They're watching, and uh, frankly, what Palau has done and what other Pacific Island, U.S. Pacific Islands have done, as an example, as they begin their rollout soon, maybe later this month for some of them. So it's uh, a passport might be, uh, it's certainly getting vaccinated is an important part of travel, but not required yet because so many people just don't have access, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, to the vaccine yet. I think, I would, if I had to guess, I would guess pretty soon that that's going to be a, a requirement for safe travel is to uh, have that uh, vaccine passport. And we ask folks uh, he, when they're coming through that pod and the, the, the team here, the Ministry of Health team is preparing that uh, card, that, that CDC card, that they really take good care of that because that might be uh, what's used someday uh, after two shots are given to, uh, to be a vaccine passport for them and help them to travel more easily. Right now, uh, no policy uh, because there's access just is not available around the world yet. Yeah, one last one. Of course, okay, sir. Right? Um, uh, to yeah, uh, we have time. Uh, yeah. What would be the absolute contraindication for getting this vaccine? Right. So, uh, Dr. Yana's question about a contraindication meaning why, who would not get this vaccine? So uh, there are very few people that we should not get this vaccine. Folks who have uh, folks who have uh, diabetes or are not feeling well should still get that vaccine. If you had a high fever, we probably would hold off. In terms of a absolute contraindication, uh, I think that if you had a reaction to a different vaccine that had the same components of the COVID-19. Uh, vaccine, but this vaccine is very pure. That's why we have to use it right away. There's no preservatives in it, like there are in some vaccines. Uh, but there is uh, uh, chemicals that are used to uh, keep the vaccine in suspension. Um, and so we have seen some anaphylaxis, uh, none in the Pacific yet. It's about one, in four cases of every million doses. You see, uh, you see someone who has swelling and sometimes even difficulty breathing from the vaccine. So that's four cases in a million. Uh, so we have not seen any while we're here, and none have been reported prior to our arrival here with, uh, with uh, using the Moderna vaccine. But if someone had a, the, the, the most significant contraindication, uh, besides age, unfortunately, right now, 
is that if you had a reaction to some to that kind of chemical before, usually it's the polysorbate or one of the other carrier proteins that are or, or carrier uh, chemicals that are in that uh, very pure vaccine. So uh, again, if you had a, a very strong reaction and shortness of breath with the first dose, then we would give them that for a second dose. We'd use a different uh, we'd use a different vaccine. Probably the Johnson and Johnson would be really useful for that. Uh, for someone who had a reaction. But people who are very ill, people who are in the hospital, have discharged, they're often getting vaccinated. Um, so people that have uh, cancer or other illnesses, they, it's important for them to be vaccinated. People with arthritis and other immune problems, it's important for them to be vaccinated. Uh, uh, and I think soon we're gonna have a recommendation about pregnancy. Uh, and uh, probably a fairly strong recommendation that pregnant women do get vaccinated. Right now, that's not the case, uh, but the preliminary data looks really like it's important because COVID-19 for a pregnant woman, for a pregnant woman, is, can be really tough on her and her baby. So, uh, so the vaccine is really quite good. I just want to say that you know, uh, after we vaccinate someone at the the national gym, we're going to watch them. You know, for at least 15 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes if we're concerned. Uh, and you've got a, a staff of medical professionals with uh, equipment standing by. So we're, we're ready in case um, anything happens. It's actually very, very quite safe and we've not experienced any severe uh, severe uh, reactions since you've been here. So it's, it's very safe. So I encourage the, uh, the public just uh, uh, not, not to worry about that. Uh, so, Lee, uh, how do we communicate this to the general public as much as we can? Um. I, I think, you know, Palau is doing so well simply because, you know, our media is very strong, social media is very strong, and a small country like this with uh, 10 radio stations, you know, I mean, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. I think people are well informed, and, and I think we're going to stay safe, you know, for the rest of the time. My, my, my question, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have been doing it, you know, um, whether um, I mean, I'm fishing or I'm out there with the guys, you know, talking politics. We always, you know, the, talking about how we're going to stay safe, you know, and then there's a flight on the 1st of uh, April coming over. Uh, which is a lot of people already start panicking about that. You know, they're concerned about it. But I say, well, the professionals, especially these uh, doctors, you know, from uh, United States, are here on the island helping us. But the question to uh, Doctor B and uh, Commander uh, Nix: uh, How long are you guys going to be here? Uh, we are scheduled to to leave on March twenty second. That's too soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. We wish they can stay. Uh -huh. do, do you like, is this your first time, you all first time here in Palau? Yes, this is my first time in Palau. And, you know, Disney says that they're the happiest place on earth. I, I, I think that's not true. I think Palau is the happiest place on earth. So do me a favor, do us a favor when you go back to the United States, you know, tell everybody to take a vacation to Palau. <laughs> we need tourists. We need tourists to come and visit us. <laughs> yeah, we really do. Will do. I can tell you that all my, my team, I, I predict that all my team here will return to Palau. Oh, that's that's nice. That's very nice. With our families. All right. Or without, you know, still we're going to welcome you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now it's uh, seven minutes after eight o'clock, and uh, if uh, uh, you don't have anything more to say, then uh, we can close our program for this evening. Maybe just uh, want to thank... Uh, uh, Team Commander Nix, uh, Dr. Brustrom, Dr. Yano. Um, the hotline remains open at the league for okay. any questions uh, in the public. Uh, the last uh, reminder for those uh, who are scheduled for their second dose on Friday and uh, next week. So for those who received the first dose uh, on the 17th of February, they should have come in today uh, to get their second dose. So uh, those who got their first dose on February 19th, they're due March 19. Those who got it on February 20th have to come in on the 22nd of March. Those who got their first dose on February 21 also coming in on March 22. 
Those who got their first dose on February 23 have to come in March 23. February 24 first dose have to come in on March 24. Again, these are all going to be at the same uh, pod site, which is the national gym. And uh, please bring your vaccination card with you. Uh, I think you know the drill because uh, everybody's got the first dose. So just a friendly reminder. I know uh, Tulik, you're also uh, disseminating this information as uh, as we speak. So we thank you uh, as well. Okay. Uh, um, Sulang, and uh, thank you, uh, everybody. Okay. Bye bye now. Have a nice evening, you all. Okay. Thank you. Bye.